for every individual. Leadership, commitment, satisfaction, and even our own performances are considered to be really desired outcomes. And so we need to really have an active engagement with our emotional intelligence. And these emotional intelligence components are what make up the outcomes of the part of our lives. And these components are associated with our introverted and extroverted arenas, according to the MBTI personality type. So the inner world is a pattern of how we attend to react to experiences, but it's things that nobody really sees directly because it's inside of ourselves. It's what only you are aware of. So internally, you're going to evaluate the data, the experiences, the possibilities, and even consider the value of a situation. For example, when you replay a meeting in your head, you might want to think about questions you want answers to or evaluate the merits of a presentation. Now, when you engage in the outer world with a pattern that people can really recognize, that goes along with our extroverted personality type. And we're going to seek more information or make decisions and commitments. So let's look at maybe a detailed project plan. And it's going to require structure priorities versus sharing links and ideas. And we're going to really need to be able to talk that through and asking about really related questions. Looking at an interpersonal aspect of emotional intelligence, we're going to start with demonstrating empathy. To demonstrate empathy, it means that you understand the emotional makeup of yourself and others. You're sensitive. You can comfort others with personal feelings, and you have the ability to perceive social nuances. Another aspect of interpersonal for emotional intelligence is energy. This is a commitment towards others by doing and actively seeking feedback to feed forward performances, even the ability to assert one's feelings. The interpersonal aspect of emotional intelligence of social skills. This is a proficiency in building relationships, a social ease, self-assurance, communication, and enjoyment with others. It's responsiveness and an ability to build trust with others. Tolerance is another interpersonal aspect of emotional intelligence, and this is the ability to demonstrate patience, patience with other people's beliefs and values, fair-mindedness, and a communication of respect during conflict. Persuasiveness is also part of interpersonal aspect. It's an ability to make good impressions with others, soliciting other people's points of view, offering ideas non-defensively, and the ability to problem solve. The last aspect of the interpersonal skills of emotional intelligence is leading. The ability to lead is an ability to have an appropriately dominant and assertive tactic. It's an intentional task-oriented and process-oriented ability, collaborating, seeking reciprocal meeting with other people. As we look through each of these, you're going to notice that there are some of these aspects which you may exhibit low, average, or highly. And it means that this is how you express yourself or how you're able to connect with yourself in these qualities. And it's likely that some of them are not really fully developed responses for you, while others are very fine-tuned. So for example, you may be highly motivated and achievement-oriented with a little bit of empathy or tolerance for others. On the other hand, you may be a master at communicating social skills and persuading others but easily become overcommitted and stressed out. So as you look at this, you want to be able to identify your typical patterns in your interpersonal and intrapersonal arenas and learn to use those functions that you rarely access when it's appropriate to do so. In other words, know what it is that you typically do and decide what response is best in a given situation. And if appropriate, access another response that is really constructive and productive in that situation. So to make the most of this information, it helps to really gain clarity about how you use the processes as described 
and identifying your process or your pattern of using these mental processes. Another thing to do is to develop these processes that you use less often so that you can really know the behaviors that are associated with the mental processes for ease of future use. And lastly, amplify your awareness about how you are doing in responding appropriately, which means attending to others' responses to you and sending feedback about your own behavior.